let us all that we can to build a better future. All right, we're going to move on now to our next segment, and this one's going to be a tough story, but I think it's maybe a sign of things to come, because just because you're defeated doesn't mean it's the end. It's a partial crest, but it didn't fully get over the wall. But look at how afraid Amazon was. So this has to deal with the union vote in Alabama. We got an article from RT America. Shh. Don't tell Rachel Maddow. She might go crazy if we quote anything from Russia. Russia. And maybe that's what the RNRT stands for. Oh, yeah. Rachel Maddow. Yeah. Hey, it's the Rachel Maddow show from Russia. (laughs) Don't watch Rachel Maddow. (laughs) She really hates that we named it this. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So Amazon is in the lead to uh, amid a push to unionize one of its Alabama warehouses with around 1,100 workers voting no on the proposal so far. More than double those backing it as the union claims the company used illegal tactics. Some 463 yes votes were recorded after ballot counting ended on Thursday evening, far outpaced by the 1,100 in opposition, according to local media. While the count is set to resume on Friday morning, the organization at the center of the battle, the Retail Wholesale Department Store Union, the RWDSU, has already voiced pessimism in the outcome with its president all but acknowledging defeat while accusing the e-retail giant of misconduct. Here's a quote. Uh, Our system is broken. Amazon took full advantage of that, and we will be calling on the labor board to hold Amazon accountable for its illegal and erroneous behavior during the campaign. But make no mistake about it, this still represents an important moment for working people and their voices to be heard. And I can't stress it out enough. Just because this is a setback should not prevent the Alabama Union of Amazon workers to stop what they're doing. Yeah, I think that it's like, if if you really think about it, one of the hardest places I could imagine trying to get a union together in current America would be someplace like Alabama because of all the laws that are very much against it. Mm-hmm. I think one thing that I think Kit's going to get to uh, in this is that this process looks like it failed, but they set in line an actual process that can succeed elsewhere. Mm-hmm. So uh, the union has repeatedly condemned Amazon's conduct during the voting process. It alleged that by placing a male box on site at the Bessemer warehouse, the company gave the impression that it would review the ballots itself and may have swayed workers' votes. Amazon has denied pressuring the U.S. Postal Service to put the box there and maintains it was meant to provide a safe, convenience, uh, provide a convenient, safe, and private way for our employees to vote on their way to and from work if they chose to. So yeah, so Amazon probably has a lot of cameras and like, oh, well, how'd you vote? We saw you vote put something in the mailbox there. What'd you vote for, buddy? You know. And like we were talking before, it's like that's how voting used to happen in America like 100 years ago. Is literally well, We have the best system, Daniel. This set type we, of have, system. we have the best system. The yeah. only difference back then was there would have been two boxes. One said, yes, I want to have a union. Then they would film you walking up to that or no, I don't. Mm. Uh, however, Amazon emails obtained by the Washington Post on Thursday indicated Amazon did press the Postal Service to place the mailbox at the facility, after all, with the United States Post Office manager telling a colleague in, Jan- in January that the company wanted to move quickly on this. Uh, another uh, missive sent by the same manager six days later also notes that an unnamed employee at Amazon HQ wanted to be kept in the loop on the pro- progress of the mailbox. So Amazon workers, don't stop what you're doing. They're afraid of you. Um, going further, overseen by the National Board of Labor Relations, uh, the vote to unionize Amazon's Bessemer, Alabama Fulfillment Center is the first major drive of its kind since 2014 when workers overwhelmingly voted against unionizing a company warehouse in Delaware. Thursday marked the first day of ballot counting in the current initiative following uh, mail-in voting that began on Friday. Of nearly 6,000 employees at the Bessemer facility, only about 55% of the workers cast ballots all by mail. A simple majority is needed to carry the day. As the union fight drags on into the second day of uh, vote counting, Amazon has also come under fire for its efforts to block a shareholder proposal to audit the company's handling of COVID-19 and measures it took to keep workers safe. Employees have alleged unsafe working conditions and lax policies amid the pandemic, with one worker fired after staging a protest over that issue last April. Nonetheless, the Securities and Exchange Commission has reportedly sided with Amazon on bearing uh, the uh, safety audit, uh, though a separate review of its civil rights and racial uh, equity practices uh, was recently given the green light. So um, I want to boil everyone's blood here real quick. Don't let this 
take you down. Don't give them the satisfaction. And I'm very sorry I got to show this video again. Shout out to Case Study QB. Be sure to follow him on Twitter. But there's a video Thanks. of Fox News uh, right now gleefully, joyfully jumping up and down. If you stay quiet or you decide to back down, lower down everything and say you're not going to fight, you're giving this bastard the satisfaction. Fight for your rights. Fight for your rights for your family, your friends, for every single worker. Amazon workers in America, never back down. Let's play this video and let it motivate you to not give this person the satisfaction of you quitting. Amazon, reportedly it is ahead in the closely watched union vote in Alabama. Good morning, Ashley. Take me through the vote, please. Indeed. And by the way, that counting resumes today. But so far, it does appear a large margin of those Amazon warehouse workers in Bessemer, Alabama, have voted against unionization. According to the Wall Street Journal, after about half of the ballots were counted by federal officials, roughly 70 percent of the Amazon employees had voted no to unionizing. Uh, both sides have been able to contest the eligibility of each and every ballot. Now union leaders are already calling foul, accusing Amazon of intimidating workers and unfair labor practices. The counting goes on, Stu, but either side can then legally challenge the results, or it could still drag on for some time. I'd love to know how Bernie Sanders and AOC, <laughs> how do they feel about this? Because they detest Amazon. They're all in favor of unions. Absolutely. They were pushing this from day yep. one, but they're not going to get it. I'm waiting for their response. What do you think it's going to be, Ash? <laughs> uh, outrage, and they'll probably say the same thing as the union leaders. But you know what? The, voc the workers have had their say, and it's no. And I think that sends yep. a strong message back. I think you're right. Thanks, Ash. I really wonder how that segment would have gone if uh, the vote happened. Oh, I know. I know how it would have gone. Uh, Jeff Bezos, you need to get the Washington Post <laughs> on this to do negative articles. You, you know, we got something happened yeah. there. We need to have yeah. real accountability. Oh, no, Amazon didn't get any of its requests demanded. How dare the union bully? Yeah. But another thing, too, that's brought up in the live stream can chat, I just too. say really quick before you yeah. get into it. So yeah. I know what AOC and Bernie are going to do. AOC is going to write a very mean tweet that some might construe as violence against uh, Amazon for being bad. I'm sure Bernie would. Bernie had a little more skin as he actually went out there. Bernie's going to be very upset that this didn't happen, but he's going to say, it's all right, it's all right, don't worry. Maybe he'll say, in the future we try something else. I'm just going to say that a good system was put in place that other Amazon warehouses can take advantage of and other places... It'd be nice if people wanted to do this. And again, they are trying so hard to keep this happening in one place because of the precedent it would set. First person that does it starts a movement. I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. And, you know, <clears throat> Carrie uh, Gale brings this up. If the workers at Amazon won't fight for themselves, what's the blanking point? And I think the bigger picture is, is that what, I, what I, and this is something that's a problem for a lot of Americans is that we're so conditioned by our media, by our political ruling class to obey the company, yeah. obey the rules. Jimmy Dore is correct. We are the children of alcoholics and we are afraid of any kind of retaliation or pushback. And I understand why there are some Amazon workers that were afraid to yeah. vote for a union. I understand why there are probably some that were afraid because they're bullied by the company because it's the only place in town yeah. where someone can get a job. And the thing is, we got to remember that you know, it's easy to be brave behind a wall or being a keyboard warrior. It's another thing when you're doing something that's going to put a risk to everything. And I think we need to show people that you cannot stop. And sometimes that one person who is afraid is probably the strongest person because all what they need is that encouragement to step up and stand. I want to remind everyone that there's been a lot of revolutions on this planet's history with humanity. All it took was one person and then many more to stand alongside to fight for that better future. Now, we're not going to get there overnight, but more people need to be encouraged. I don't look at this as a defeat. This is something now that Amazon's going to have to be aware of, that more people are going to be wanting a union. More people are going to be wanting their rights. And to Amazon workers here in America, compare what you have to go through to what other workers in other democ democratic first world nations have to go through. I guarantee you this. 
they have maybe just a fraction or a little bit more of rights, workers' rights, than what we get here in the States. And it's, again, it's difficult. It's impossible. Everything's impossible until it happens. I want to, to get everyone back to the 1920s. Same situation. At that point in time, people were so cowed by very, very powerful industry leaders to not even try to think about. Like, even the cops, like, it was even harder back then because you had, like, the Pinkertons, which anytime you do a strike, they just come in and shoot you up um, or beat you up. And it's like, at least today, that isn't the case. To some degree, there's just intimidation in, in a less, in a more subtle variant. So it's hard. It, it's not, I don't think it's fully that they don't want it themselves. I think that they are balancing cost and uh, and uh and benefit out of all this and i think a lot of the people like it's brought up it's alabama um well first of all you think of the mindset that a lot of people grow up with about that you already have all their lives being told that unions are corrupt and bad and don't help and they just take money out of your pocket so then there's the culture aspect of it you have as kit pointed out that this is like the only place that you can work and they don't want to rock the boat. People are absolutely terrified. I, f- I forgot who it was, but like some European came to America and he's like, I've never seen such a timid population that ironically thinks it's the most free. So we have people that are cowed into it. We have people that perhaps think that it's best if they don't have a union. There, obviously, there's going to be a group of people that always think that they don't need one. It's a lot of factors and all of those are adjustable and change over time so nothing's set in stone what we need is for it to happen somewhere and then we need that to be successful and then other people will want want it themselves because at that point then the grass is greener on the other side currently well in general a lot of people don't like going first and don't like being putting themselves on risk for something that they don't know an outcome to that has um nothing of its sort to tr- sort of bounce off of. But I would say that if some other place did this with Amazon and they actually unionized, we would start seeing very quickly a lot of other places wanting to replicate that. Yeah. Um, and I understand that times do change and that there was a difference between a lot of labor movements in the early 1900s, 1920s, 30s, you know, 40s, and going onwards. And now in this day and age of social media, where if you do talk about it, well, your name is out there on social media. Mm-hmm. But if people remain silent or afraid or bow their head, um, nothing will fundamentally change. And sometimes you have to take that first step. Now, in 2014, there was a call for a union for Amazon workers in Delaware. And now there was a call for a union for the Amazon workers in Alabama. It's do, not do you know the, what the end. Vote was in Delaware. Uh, the the but, sort of same same outcome yeah. as that's it was. actually sort of promising. Was Delaware would have I would expect more natural cultural tendency to have union. Yeah, and so if they're the same, that means it would probably be closer now in Delaware. I don't know. It's it's something that hasn't finished yet. It's yeah. a process of rebirth of something that you know, hundred years ago made a lot more. Yeah, yeah. same fight. And uh, also, just before we end the segment, Carrie Gale, uh, we'll, I'll give you the final comment. Thanks for explaining it, guys. It's really frustrating when you want change. And the thing is, change doesn't happen overnight. And, you know, I think this is something we all should learn from. I'm not looking at this as a defeat. Amazon was so frightened and scared. You had Fox News going to bat telling Jeff Bezos to use the Washington yeah. Post, the most left-leaning news site in the country to go up against Bernie Sanders. I mean, God, do not be living under a rock. Yeah, think of it that way. Judge the Amazon, at this point, judge the Amazon vote not by the outcome of the vote, but by the response of the powerful. Yeah. I think that'll give a better idea of why we're not as broken up about this vote failing because they really, (laughs) they were taking this thing pretty seriously. Yeah. And they were talking an awful lot about it and they would have not done that if it was meaningless and they didn't think it was going to happen so the fact that even though it was a pretty large margin of loss even if there were some shenanigans the fact that they were so worried meant that they really did think there was a chance that it was going to win and a reasonable chance at that Mm -hmm. so keep going yeah get people that like an effect like what's the thing you could do as a regular person talk positively about unions with people that work in these places don't have to push it on them Mm -hmm. just Get their mind. So when they think of unions, they don't think corrupt, bad, don't want, very bad. Make them think protective, united, 
uh, negotiation. You know what I mean? And other countries still have strong unions. And if these other democracies can figure it out, why can't we? And I want to give the final word to Pat Brannigan. It will take real guts. Uh, and the 463 people in Bessemer, Alabama at the Amazon facility showed that. And that's a good final note to have. Yeah, all of them should, uh, we, we should get all of them a beer. Yeah, yeah. all 463. You, you did something important. It didn't uh, fully an ice, succeed. An ice cold beer. Yeah. And it's a steak, like, and a steak, and a sweet potato, <laughs> and a side dish, and a dessert. Okay, of well, their choosing. well, Kit is paying, so there you go. Uh, oh, uh,